<laughs> so I, can, you, can you talk, I actually refer a lot with our portfolio companies to kind of how you think of seed investing and pre-seed. And you've written a pair of articles that I actually refer to a lot. Um, could you talk about kind of how you think of seed, how you think of pre-seed, and kind of the stages of investment that you kind of think about? So a lot of this has actually changed. And I think the, the blog post that you're referring to is the one that I would call uh, the new venture landscape. Yep. That the entire intent of that blog post was to try and explain how things have changed. Um, it used to be that about five years ago, uh, when somebody would say a seed round, the company would be raising a half a million dollars or maybe up to a million dollars. Today, a seed round, companies are usually raising two million to three million dollars. Um, and that's really more like an early A as opposed to a, a C. So, and, and one of my big uh, gripes and complaints about the venture ecosystem is that things change, but we do a really poor job of actually naming them appropriately. Mm. We still say it's, it's still a seed round. Well, it used to be half a million. Now it's two and a half million. And we still call it the same thing. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. um, but so, um, so here's kind of how I break down pre-seed, seed, series A, and, and beyond. Um, so pre-seed to me is kind of the, the first 500K or first million that a company raises. So the, ra the range can be anything less than a million. Okay. Mm -hmm. A seed round is anything which is kind of beyond 1 million raised to up to 3 million raised. And if you're raising more than three million, like usually it's it's unlikely that you'll see people raising between three three to six million. It's usually like up to three or four, and then it'll end up going like six, ten, twelve, and it'll just end up going from there. Um, those are your full-on Series A rounds today, uh, and uh, you can also look at these three at, at based on. Uh, I have another blog post that I call Hope and Numbers. Right? <laughs> so. When you're, when you're raising a pre-seed round, you're raising squarely on the basis of hope. And the hope that the investor has to have is that this team is actually going to be able to deliver on what, they, what they're saying they, what they want to build. Mm -hmm. And that the business will actually become what, what you hope it's going to become in the future, right? So that's, it's all, you're, all your bets are in the hope bandwagon. Mm -hmm. um, when you get to kind of a seed, you start seeing a little bit less hope and a little bit of numbers turning on, right? Like, have you had your first, have you launched your first product? Have you had your first customer? Uh, it may not be a scalable business model yet, but mm -hmm. you have some inklings of, yes, at least the product is getting there. Mm -hmm. with, a, with a Series A, it starts to become more numbers, right? Like, it's still got a little bit of hope, but there's more numbers in the sense that you have to have a finished product. You have to have found product market fit. Uh, you may not have scaled up your sales force yet um, and your sales processes yet, but you will see at least like the, the product side is cranking and the marketing is coming on board, right? Um, and then you get to a series B, that's a straight up numbers round, right? They literally want to look at what's your customer acquisition cost, what's your, uh, what's your revenue per user and, and how much revenue, like how, how large can you grow? And it's all about numbers at that stage. Um, wow. so that's kind of how I look at like pre-seed up to series B and both in terms of fundraising sizes and in terms of like what, what those stages entail. 